Hey YouTube, this is Prince from Desi Pro Grammar. I welcome back to another awesome Flutter tutorial. And in this video, we are going to implement multi select drop downs in Flutter. In the last video, we implemented single select drop downs in Flutter where you can drop down, select a value from the drop down, and we also implemented multiple drop downs in coordination where the other drop down used to work only when the first drop down was selected. In this video, we are going to extend our knowledge and we will be learning about how we can implement multi select drop down in flutter now flutter by default doesn't give us any wizard using which we can implement this but we are going to use little bit of tricks and some code from stake overflow and from google using which we can implement the multi select drop down in flutter now one simple way to do that will be to use this flutter multi select package which is right here and this is quite awesome but I won't be using this in this video because the UI ain't something that I'm comfortable with with this Flutter multi select. Although for the case of simplicity, you will have to just add this and then this simple code will do everything for you. It's quite tricky to fetch the value from this code, which is something you will have to consider if you're going to use this. But I'm going to use another better alternative to this. And this is an answer from a stake overflow. I don't know who asked this, but this is quite interesting. And this actually gives us a very beautiful material UI with the same thing. Because as per this answer, we'll be using a dialogue which will be from Flutter itself. Like we are going to manipulate Flutter's own wizard to implement this. So this video is all about how we can use these code, uh, this code available right here because obviously it's not well documented and people have questioned too that what if the list was and value is dynamic. So no offense to the writer, obviously we are thankful to the person who answered this. Let's see how we can extend this thing to our use. So for that, first of all, just copy this entire code from the first box and let's get to our VS code. I'll paste it somewhere. Remember, you don't have to paste it in any of your home page or class, like any stateful or stateless widget class, you don't have to paste it right over there. Paste it somewhere else, not inside any class. And I will just, I'll just put something here saying that copied from stake overflow and just forgive me for my spelling because I always misstep the string of stake overflow. I just forgot it every time. And here paste that code. Okay, this code ain't something that you won't have to change anything in this code because everything is very well, you know, placed right here. The only thing that you will have to change is this title. Rest is quite cool. The next thing that you will use is this code. This is something which you use to actually implement this. Now, if I just copy this and if I go to my code, now I have to go to my state, like my class, which extends my state where my build is there. And here, if I say something like, if I just paste the code right over here, let me give too much spacing so that things are things look good. So this is the complete code that we have, which will take care of the, which will show us the dialogue and it will also take care of the selection part. Now to call this, we will obviously need a button. So, I mean, this is just a function. This won't show in the UI until unless you call it. And one more thing, it will ask for the build context. So I'll go out, I will go down here in my list of visit and I'll call here another visit. Let's say a uh, raised button, which will obviously have its own values. I won't be decorating it much. We'll just have a child, which will have a text, which will say open multi select, feel free to use any text that you like. And then we will have an on pressed. And here the first on pressed, I want it to be empty. But this will call another, another function, which will be I don't remember. So let's go up right here. And okay, this is so multi select. So we will have to call so multi select with the build context. So I'm saying so multi select and we will pass the build context, which is context by default. You see the build context is passed right here. So this is context by default. If I save this and if I refresh here, then you will get this open multi select. If I click on this, we get this beautiful UI which says select animals. These two are checked by default. And if I click on OK, that we just get the values which were checked. If I click it again, if I select cat too, if I deselect or unselect mouse, if I select OK, then I get those values one and two. Now what's happening right here is that this code is taking care of everything which we have seen on our UI. 
this initial selected value is passing those initial selected value which are selected by default once you click on this if you don't want any value to be here just comment this line of code and now no value will be selected or if you want to manipulate it to your own values you will just have to like I just want only one value to be selected now if I save this only one value is selected and if you want to change the values it's quite easy let's say that I'm saying here India I say USA I say Canada and let's go right in top and let's select let's change the title to select country let's save and now this will be you see India USA Canada India selected by default if I click OK I get the first value obviously and I don't think it's tough to get the value actually although we get only the index right here you can get this value too quite easily and here if I say two we obviously get two values selected by default two things which we have to learn in this video like even after this time is to how to populate this list dynamically I mean what if you are fetching the data from your server or you have to populate it based on some other selection then how to populate this dynamically and the next thing is that how to actually fetch the values because it won't be easy actually to get these values so first let's see how we can do this dynamically now this multi select dialog item which takes an int and I will always I mean I must say that you should leave it to int although you can change it but after changing it will be a little bit tricky to pass to use this value here so if you want to change this to a string you can for sure there is no issue in that but then this this thing you will have to reconsider using it because here you are we are changing a list to a set okay and if you change it to a string then then this value even after changing one uh, is not being reflected quite easily so I will leave it to int only and we will use the same process that we used in the earlier video to populate the list I will first create an empty list so we I say a list which is of type multi select dialog item we say multi select dialog item which again takes a int I will name this as multi item and this is a list that's pretty much it we always also had need values so I will say final values to populate and this will be a map with the key being an integer and the value being a string I will say first India I'll say second let's say Britain I'll say third let's say Europe okay Europe not a country let's say Russia and fourth we will say let's say Canada cool now we have to populate this dynamically so we will need a function to populate this dynamically so we have a white function which says populate multi select it won't need any parameter it won't return anything basically it will add these values to this list so here I'm saying multi item dot add and this will add values of the type multi item dialog multi select dialog item so I'm saying multi select dialog item it will need, it will take two values the first one being an integer of value and the second one will be a string of label so since I have to add this multiple times I will first cut this okay and I will say for for let's say int int v in values to populate dot keys we have the same code right here and this will be v and this label will be values to populate with V now this will populate the value and here we have to we don't need this code you see this final items I don't need this I will be simply saying that our final list of items will be multi item that's it now we need to call this function anywhere to populate this because if you want to call this it will be an empty 
list so if I just save it and without calling this function if I click on this open multi select you see this will be an empty fine so we need to call this function anywhere now you can just do this anywhere you want there is no restriction but let's say I'm just calling this right here okay let's save it and here if I refresh it again I will get all those values let's click on it okay let's wait for it let's click on it and see we get all these values out of which these two are selected by default if I click OK I get one and two these two are selected let's click it again and we keep getting this the reason is since it was populated already if I click on this again it will be populated the same problem that we got last time which is quite easy to solve I'm just saying first empty this list if it is populated and then pop repopulate it if we refresh it again this issue should be gone it will be gone obviously so we have these three values let's click on it we get three selections and if I deselect all if I just say Canada we get one single selection last issue has been solved now the next issue which ain't an issue actually it's just that how do we get these all values so here we have this list this actually map or of item of value key value pairs where the key is an integer the value is in string we need the value but we get the key so let's see how we can get the value for that I'm saying another function let's say void get value from key okay now see we get this selected value as a set so first we have to change the set to an list then we have to iterate to every element fetch the value from our list from our map and then we have to show it right here so I am saying here that I will need a set so after printing these values which ain't necessary you can just erase this code but I am saying call here okay first let me get rid of my spelling errors I am saying get value from key and I have to pass a set which is selected values and I have to accept this set here too I am saying set I'll just name it L-E-C-T-I-O-N selection I hope no more spelling errors now here I'm saying first of all make sure that this selection ain't empty because if this is empty and then if you are trying to convert it to a list it will throw you an error so if this is not null then and only then first convert I mean if we are going to convert it to list and then iterate it so I'm saying for and since we're going to get an integer I can just say int x in selection dot to list what we have to do is we have to print the value so I'm just saying print nothing much just go to values to populate and here pass this x come on not c x and that's pretty much it now if we restart this complete application and here if I click on wait, click on open multi select I have selected three values if I click on OK you can see we get these three values just take a look right here we get these three values India Britain Russia let's do it again I'm saying just India click on OK we get just India I'm saying hey I want to visit all the countries click on OK you get all the values right here so that's it from my side in this video we have learned how to implement multi select although it's not a native flutter widget so obviously you won't get you can't easily implement something like this although you can do this it's quite easy just use any just use any normal button with this arrow icon and it will look like a drop down no offense to the of original drop down but that's pretty much it in this video and i thought we have done this quite well the complete code will be available on gitlab not on github so and the link is in description so you can just go there copy the code use it in your own project and that's it let's so let's see you soon again